Hello, and uh, I'm here looking at short circuits and how to do circuit diagrams and things like that. I um, want to help you out with a little bit of things that I found were confusing during the assignments. Uh, first thing I'm going to talk about is short circuits. And so here I have a battery. And this battery is looped around and comes to a switch right here. And the switch is open. So when the current comes here, it's going to continue through this wire and go through the light bulb and come down here. Again, the switch is open, so it can't go this way. So it'll come here and the light bulb will light. So this is a closed circuit with one light bulb in it that lights. But then if we close the switch, like we see right here, now when the electricity comes here, the current comes to this point, it has a place that it can go without any resistance. And so the electricity is going to go through here and come back to the battery and the battery is going to get hot because we're going to have all this current flowing here unimpeded. And so it'll go very fast and it'll heat up the battery. And in this case, the light bulb does not light. So this is a short circuit. Um, anytime you have a path around the battery where it doesn't have to go through any light bulb or any other um, load bearing device like a toaster or um, a hair dryer or anything like that. So if there's nothing here um, to impede the current, the current's going to go really fast and it's going to heat up the battery. This is exactly the same circuit, even though it looks different. Here we have a case where the light bulb is in this loop and the switch is in the top loop. When the switch is open, when the current comes to the light bulb here, the only path it can take is through the light bulb and back to the battery and the light bulb will light and the battery will not get hot. But now if we close the switch, as is shown right here, now the electricity has a path, even though it's physically a longer distance, it's still going to go this way because there's no resistance here. There's no light bulb or anything else. And so the current will go like this, skipping the light bulb. The light bulb doesn't light and the battery will become very, very hot. And so that's, that's a short circuit. Um, Again, it doesn't have anything to do with the length of the circuit. It has to do with how much resistance is in the circuit. And if we have just copper wires and a switch, that's almost zero resistance. So that's where the current will go. So current will always find the path of least resistance. Okay. Next thing I wanted to uh, talk about was drawing circuit diagrams. So we take a diagram here where we have a battery, a wire, a light bulb, and a wire. And this wire is touching the threads on both sides. And so when the current comes to this point here, it's going to go across the thread. It's not going to go up through the filament. And so it's using the light bulb just like a, another wire. And the way that's drawn, and it didn't show you this in the book, is um, you draw the light bulb off to the side. And so you have your, your battery and you have your wires going like this. And this will be a short circuit and this battery will become very hot. And the light bulb won't light. Um, the light bulb is bypassed. And so this is a short circuit again. Uh, in diagram two, we have the wire connected to the thread portion of the light bulb. And then on the other side is connected to the knob. And so now the electricity is going to go up and through the filament and down and through. And so the way we would draw this again is a battery is two lines. The positive side is drawn a little bit longer than the negative side. And then we have a wire. And these lines all represent a connection whether the light bulb is directly connected to the battery or if there's a wire there. And then we have the light bulb and then we have a connection back to the other side of the battery. So in this case, the light bulb will light. The third one, 
we have a wire coming up and touching the knob of the light bulb and then another wire coming from the knob back to the other side. So this is just like diagram one. And um, so we're gonna draw our circuit diagram the same. We have a wire coming up, bypassing the light bulb because the current doesn't go up through the filament and then coming back to the other side. This will become hot. And this again is a short circuit. So the one and three are both short circuits. They're equivalent circuits. And then the fourth one, again, we have the battery. So we'll draw this to represent the battery. And then we have a wire, a connection. And so this represents that connection right here, this line from the battery to the light bulb. And then we have the light bulb. And then now you'll notice it's touching the thread. So it came in on the knob, touching the thread. So the electricity is gonna go up through the filament and back to the back side of the battery, which we show with this line right here. And so two and four are the same. These are single bulb circuit and the light bulb lights. So they're both single bulb circuits. So then I want to go to another one here, uh, trying to clarify. Um, we have two different setups here physically. We have a battery that has a direct connection to the light bulb. And then we have the light bulb. And you'll notice it touches the knob here and the threads here. So the electricity has to go up through the light bulb. So the light bulb is going to light. So the light bulb is lit. And then we have a wire coming back to the negative side. And so this line here, doesn't matter how long that line is, that represents a connection, not a wire. And so this line here can represent a direct connection like we have here. And then this line, again, represents a connection in this case, the connection is a physical wire. But it doesn't matter if a wire is there or not, we use the line to represent the connection. So figure one can work for figure A. Figure two, same thing. We have a line here. It doesn't matter how long that line is, that represents a connection. And it could be a direct connection just like it is in figure A. So figure two could also represent figure A. And we could have put the light bulb here. We could have put the light bulb here, could have put it here. We could have put the light bulb anywhere we wanted to along this line, except for by convention, they don't put light bulbs in the corners unless it's like, The only time they put light bulbs in the corner is if the light bulb is bypassed like it is in these diagrams here. Otherwise, you'll notice if it's not bypassed, the bulb goes right uh, in the middle of the line, not in the corners. Then we look at diagram B, and when we look at diagram B, you'll notice that we have two wires instead of one wire this time. And to go from diagram B to our circuit diagram, we have a wire, which is a connection to the knob side of the light bulb. So this represents a connection, which could be that wire. And then that came into the knob of the light bulb. Then coming from the threads, we have a second wire that goes around to the back side of the battery, which could be this line right here. And so figure one works with figure B. And the same thing is true. It doesn't matter how long this line is, it represents a connection, not the length of a wire, or even if there is a wire there. And so figure two also works for B. So these two could be for either one of these circuits. And so when you do your circuit diagrams, they don't show 
physical layout, they show connections, whether there's a wire there or not. And then the last thing that I wanted to go over with you was uh, the last part of this section where we went back to um, the very first thing we did, which was where we found four different ways to light a light bulb using one battery, one wire, and one light bulb. And we see we found four different ways to do it physically. But no matter which way we did it, we have a battery with the connection to a light bulb, and then the other side of the light bulb is connected to the other side of the battery. And so all four of these diagrams could work for any one of these four setups. So this little line here represents a direct connection between the light bulb and the battery. This longer line here still represents a direct connection to the light bulb. It does not matter how long this line is because that line represents a connection, not a wire. So all four of these, again, could work for all four of these. They're all the same. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'll make more videos when I see other issues that come up that need to be addressed.